Hi everyone, thanks for joining me. Chad here. Today I want to do a little bit about a particular instruction that's my favorite, which is peak fractionation. So imagine this is an SEC run and imagine we're actively like doing this run right here and we're at about 50 mils. We know there's a sample that's going to be coming off soon. So right around 100 mils, we are running in a manual mode doing this and we just decide to hit fractionation and we just start collecting fractions. And then after that, as soon as we hit fractionation, we go to lunch and we come back and we've collected, you know, two racks of fractions here. Like, uh, what would that be? Um, I think there's 15. So we've collected like almost 30 fractions, but we only need the first, I don't know, 10. So that's a waste of a lot of tubes. Um, so if we want to, uh, be able to save these tubes and use our space more efficiently, especially if we're going to be doing, you know, a bunch of runs using a method editor and scouting. So a bunch of runs back to back. Um, we want to be able to have a nice tight fractionation. Um, there's one way to do this, which is super easy, and it will end up looking something like this result up here. So with this result, I'm just gonna zoom in, and you notice that as soon as the UV goes up, we start collecting fractions, and once the UV goes down a certain level, it stops collecting fractions. We don't waste any more um, like fraction tubes after that. So if we want to, we you know save it. You know it's expensive to collect a ton of fractions every time. It's also annoying. It's a lot of work taking these fractions in and out of the fraction collector but um, it also allows us to do a lot of runs all at once. So if we have to do like 15 SEC runs, it allows us to put all those runs in just a few racks in the fraction collector. So I'm gonna show you how you set this up, both in the manual mode um, and also in the method editor. So first in manual. So again, imagine we're doing an SEC run right now in manual, we have a column right here um, on the system and we're running at two mils a minute and we know those um, fractions are going to be the not those fractions we know the UV is going to be going up sometime soon and so how we start setting up that fractionation where it does peak fractionation is we go to execute manual instruction and then we go to fraction collection so here's peak fractionation right here the trick is you need this instruction, but also one other instruction, which is this one right here, peak frac parameters. Um, and peak frac parameters have to be has to be entered into the run log first. So peak frac parameters tells you what to look for, and then peak fractionation actually tells you like what volume to collect. So. Uh, let's just go through line by line here what we can do with peak fractionation. So first is the signal source. This is pretty self-explanatory. Really you can collect like UV or conductivity or any analog out. Um, we're just going to do UV. And then the mode is level. And so the two choices really here are um, level or slope. Slope depends on you know if the curve is going up at a particular degree and then level is just like a threshold that you cross. Level, in my opinion, makes the most intuitive sense. And then minimum peak width sets the minimum peak fractionation length. So the system continues until the minimum is met, which has never really made much sense to me. I've never had to use this instruction. So if you just leave it at the default, you'll be fine. Um, so the start level, we could just type in 50, like this run, this run right here, I think had peak fractionation parameters at 50. So, you know, that's, that's the level we're going to enter in. And then for our end level, we're going to do 50 as well. I would recommend making the end level either the same as the start level or lower. All right. And then we're going to hit execute, but that's not enough. We still have to in type in peak fractionation. So right here, and then we're going to collect in 15 mil tubes. We can do our tube sizes. Um, let's look at the fraction collector really fast. 
fraction collector content. And you notice I only have one rack of 15 mil tubes. So that's the only thing it'll allow me to collect. It's the only thing it's gonna populate here. We can do time or volume. Time, you sort of have to do some math in order to collect it. We're just gonna do 15 mil tube size and we're just, our tube, the first tube we're gonna collect is gonna be the next tube that's available and hit execute. All right, so now if we wanted to, we could go to lunch and um, we'd be just fine collecting our peak. So it's the same thing in the method editor. So I'm just gonna open that up real fast. Okay, so here we are with our new method. Um, just imagine, again, we're doing an SEC run is what we're writing. Um, so we have a column in position one. The system flow is going to be at two mils a minute. And for the elution phase, you know, pre like obviously somewhere in between here, we would have some sort of sample application phase. But here's how we type in peak fractionation parameters. So we're going to go to fraction collection. And then again, we have to read the peak fractionation parameters um, first. So we have our choices of mode or um, for mode, we have a choices of level and slope. And so we're just going to do 50 again. We can make this a variable if we want to. And then we're going to do the end level. The uh, yeah, we're going to do the end level. I'm not going to make that a parameter this time. Um, so insert. And then right after that, we can finally do peak fractionation. And we're just gonna do 15 mil tubes. We're gonna do the base's volume and fractionation size is gonna be 15. And insert, we could make like say frac size. We could also make this a uh, variable as well if we wanted to. Okay, and then hit change. There you have it. There's peak fractionation inside of a method editor, inside of a method. Thank you very much. I hope this helps with your purifications.